What's going on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? So, we are back again for another What It Is. And hopefully, we ain't on here too long because, baby, we really ain't got nothing to do and right, nothing to say. But we got two good things that we really need to discuss. And I know every time I say that, we always be on here for a minute. But, hey, it is what it is. I'm tired as hell. And I'm just going to put that out there and I'm just going to tell it to you truthfully. Okay? I woke up a little bit too early and I am paying for it. Okay? Um, so, you know, we've been a little bit stressed out. All right, we've been a little bit stressed out. Girl, I don't know. If you ain't been on the social medias and you don't see and haven't seen what's been going on, I don't know what rock you've been living under. Because at this point, we are a laughing stock. We are the class clown. We are just fools at this point to I feel like everybody in the world. And we probably been looked at that, looked at like that since for like the past eight years okay the past eight or nine years i'm just being honest all right and this was just the icing on the cake okay what is going on in this political realm what is going on with our government and i'm so mad that we have to start this off like this and it's a couple of stories that's really serious that we really need to talk about and this is one of them i'm at home on sunday chilling and it's a nice beautiful day out and then all of a sudden joe biden want to interrupt my sabbath okay my day of rest like everybody else supposed to have you know that's what the bible said you know you work monday through friday well in the bible i think it was monday through saturday but you had that saturday that sunday off you had that sunday off okay to be stress-free do what you got to do and this man wanted to drop out the race literally drop i said what now see honestly as i said earlier and been saying on you know here and there no one should really be surprised that this happened because of the amount of pressure that he was getting and yes age pays a factor in it and his mental health his probably physical health you know he just wound up getting the uh miss girl and everything and so at this point it's just like i just did not understand why the democrats went about this the way that they did and i need somebody who is well versed in these pol pol political realms you know that can be neutral unbiased or whatever just explaining why they went about it the way they went about it at the time that they went about it because if it was an age thing when it's concerning joe biden um they should have been did that they should have said listen don't even put your head in the election you need to step down right at the beginning or it's a possibility that they had they did say that before and he was just being headstrong and said no i'm going to go ahead and start this campaign and um do re-election or whatever try to get re-elected and it just didn't work out the way that he thought it would um and i'm pretty sure that he probably didn't think that he was going to go this way but hey age is a factor he 81 years old and people need to understand listen i know um, what it is with Trump. Trump is only 72, 78. He about to be 79 probably. So they neck and neck. They literally neck and neck. It's just one presents themselves a little bit different. One presents himself as an 81 year old. Okay. And the other one doesn't. And that's just what it was. Okay. Um, but they're both old men. They're both old men. And the fact of the matter is you got all this going on and then you have your Democratic Party coming out telling you to drop out, drop out, drop out. The way that they were trying to say that and the media putting all that pressure on him, that just was not a good look for the Democrats, okay? That was not a good look for the Democrats at all. You are literally telling the person that is your nominee to drop out of the race and we have nobody else that can be a, 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 a candidate, you know, right off the bat. Because what if this would have happened when if if Biden had a vice president that nobody liked, and I mean absolutely nobody liked, or nobody knew much about, we would have literally just handed the uh, Trump back over to the presidency. That's literally what would have happened. You know, if y'all would have did this and he would have dropped out and it would have been somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And it's just so ridiculous. Is George Clooney trying to go out for politics? Because I thought he was just an actor. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, you know, his 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 words I guess bear some type of weight because 
once he put out there that he wants him to drop out and he should step aside and all this stuff, baby, they made that all news and everything like he's somebody in the political realm. And I'm like, what's going on? Is there something that we need to know? Okay, is this going to be your second, you know, phase of life? You know, you phasing out of the entertainment and now you're going to go into politics? That's what it's feeling like. It's feeling like that. And I don't know how I feel because sometimes, as I've been seeing, I don't really want people who have been in other realms, like in the entertainment business, trying to be in these political arenas or whatever because... A few of them have made us look foolish as shit. And we see one of them who's trying to get back into the office, all right? But I need somebody, <clears throat> again, to just explain to me why the Democrats went about this the way that they did. And I feel like it's ridiculous at one point, but at the same time, I kind of get it. Because you probably scared. You're probably scared that, oh, he's going to get up there and do the same thing that he did at that last debate which has brought all of this on you know and then it's gonna sway people and be like you know we can't vote for him because there's no we don't know what his mental faculties is he's not you know health and all that stuff or whatever but at the same time anything can happen to any one of them you know health wise and all of that but you know i just feel like they i don't know i don't know i'm not even surprised that this is going on but at the same time, you know, I was one of the ones that was like, well, if he drop out, who gonna get it? Y'all making us, y'all making the, the party look cuckoo for Cocoa, Cocoa Puffs right right now. Okay, y'all making the Democratic Party, and I don't want to, you know, put that, trying to say, you know, whatever, but this is how it is. You're making the party look weak, weaker than it already looks. Okay, you're making the base look weak as hell doing shit and moving the way that y'all doing so of course now i was just like well because people was complaining like so who gonna be the other nominee who is going to be the nominee for the democratic presidency right and of course people was throwing in kamala the vp and they didn't want you got people that half want her half don't and it's, it's 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 really ridiculous at this point because it's a lot of misinformation that has been spread because you know people like to get their information from off of social media instead of actually looking up things on actual actual websites that you know are available from the government that particular tenure of the person's you know um t time in holding a particular position you would know exactly what was going on and what was done and what we have been seeing is a lot of misinformation that is literally being put out there to cause division amongst us okay because people would expect you know you would think but this don't happen i know some people think that automatically once you get a black candidate or a woman candidate that you know the women or the black people are going to automatically go to them absolutely not and we see the division that's happening right now and all of this is a ruse all of this is to cause division you know um putting out the misinformation about uh, uh kamala's uh, uh uh you know history as a prosecutor you know people want to say oh she arrested thousands of men and put them thousands of black people and put them in jail for marijuana that wasn't true it's only was 45 and we don't even know whether they all black or not okay and that could be easily looked up at you know what i'm saying and you know at the end of the day how are you going to get mad at her for doing her job she's the prosecutor she's not putting people in jail she's probably bringing up the charges and arguing that they should or shouldn't but it's the judge and the jury and all of them that's going to do that you know but at the same time she's doing her job she was doing her job and i feel like when it comes to us we feel as though sometimes when a black person or one of us gets into a particular office that or a particular status that we are supposed to cut corners and you know take a lenient role or a or position when it comes to us that comes into you know the forefront like if you are a judge or a prosecutor and you're black and then you have this black person that comes up and they got this charge or that charge oh i'm gonna overlook it or i'm gonna be a little bit lenient on it just because you're one of me you're, you're, you're my people you know you're my saying skin folk you know what i'm saying but that's not how it goes 
You don't get no passes like that. If you commit a crime, you have to do the fucking time to take the consequences. That's how I feel. Black, white, or whoever the fuck it is, you know? But at the same time, I understand that mentality, but I also know legally you cannot do that. And you got to stop, just like I said, listening to all of this misinformation that's going out. That's one aspect. She did not lock up thousands of people for marijuana, okay? She did not lock up thousands of men, black men, for marijuana, you know? It was only 45 that got, you know, really prosecuted and all that stuff. She, it, it is what it is, okay? And then you're going to still have people that's going to argue that down and say, well, this, what about this, what about this, what about it? What about it? Y'all want to get to trying to make her seem like she's such a bad person. But yet, when you put that information out, when you put that information out the way that y'all are doing, and, and, and you're trying to sway people from not voting for her. So that tells me that you're not going to vote for her. You're going to vote for Trump. That's what it tells me. Because who else you going to vote for? And don't give me no third party candidate. Because they don't matter. People, A couple of people was in my comments um, on my Instagram talking about something. What about Robert F. Kennedy? What about him? Ain't nobody talking about that man. He has no chance. Okay? Let's be serious. You don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay? We saw what happened when people was doing shit like that before. Okay? That's how Trump got up into the office the first time. You know? Like, come on. Don't nobody care about them third party candidates at this point. That's not what it is. They don't matter. Nobody's talking about them. And we are talking about two people. And that's just what it is. Okay? Unfortunately, maybe. But and Robert F. Kennedy is not. Is not the one. Even if he were. No, he is not the one. Okay? And so you got that going on. The misinformation about that. That's what's dividing, you know, the votes and everything and people, you know, perception of things because they can't think on their own or whatever. They don't want to Google smoogle. They don't want to do none of that stuff. So you also got the whole situation of, oh, it's going to be a certain group of people, mainly black men, um, some who don't want to vote for this woman because she is a black woman. OK, that's one. You know, that's two, I should say. And, of course, you're going to have other people of other races that don't want to vote her because she is a woman, too. Men, as well. You know what I'm saying? And because she's black, mainly. And then we're going to get onto this whole situation of whether she's black or not. Bitch, do y'all know how many versions of black there is? Do you know how many culture of black there is? Black Americans are not the only black fucking people on this earth, okay? There are black Jamaicans, black Caribbeans, black people over there in fucking Europe, black people in Africa, black is black is fucking black. Now the culture may be different and all of that, but they're black. She's half black, okay? And that's just what it is. Whether her people came from Trinidad, whether her people came from Alabama, bitch, she is black. She is mixed, okay? She's just like motherfucking Barack Obama, who had a whole ass white mama. And y'all ain't had no problem with that. Y'all ain't had no problem with that. He had a Kenya, Kenya father and a whole ass white mama. But then when it comes to, to her, it's an issue. It's an issue. Y'all literally doing the same thing that Trump did to Barack. You're doing it to Kamala. You're doing it to the VP. And it is ridiculous at this point because we don't need that. Yes, I get it. You can't trust nobody up in politics. Everybody is a criminal. Everybody is not who they say they are. But you're literally doing all of this. So that you can sway the vote so you can get Trump up in office. And what does he have to offer? Absolutely nothing. He can say whatever it is that you think he's going to say to get your vote or whatever. And then once he get up in there, he's not going to do it. And again, let's, let's get on this stimulus shit because I'm so tired of talking about this. He did not give us a stimulus. He wanted to, They first of all, they delayed that shit. He reduced that shit. He didn't even want to sign it over. Okay, Congress gave us that. The IRS gave us that. And it was one fucking check at that time. A $1,200 check. And depending on how, how many kids you got, you probably got a little bit more. You probably got 24. You probably got 18. But at the end of the day, it was a one-time thing. And what did it pay off? It paid off probably one month of rent or one month of bills. But then you were still suffering for the rest of the pandemic. You still had to go out there and work. 
it wasn't something that just came monthly and monthly and monthly money and then they think they taxed us or whatever that's why taxes was high and shit like come on come on quit 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 using that stupid shit as a reason you know and i'm just like y'all irritated me and i'm i'm sitting here saying i don't care who you vote for at this point but if you're gonna vote for somebody make it make sense if you're gonna be a certain person and you're gonna say that i'm gonna vote for trump because of this and this make it make sense don't put out there that stupid shit because he gave us a stimulus because you know he did that no that's dumb don't say that you're not going to vote for Kamala because, oh, she locked up black people for marijuana, which wasn't the case. And even if it was, marijuana was illegal at the time. Okay? Don't say that you're not going to vote for somebody because, oh, she's not really black. So what are, we gonna, what are you going to do? Then you got people want to say that they're not going to vote. And then that's exactly why we in the shitter the way that we are now. Girl, it's just so fucked up. It's just like we so messed up at this point. Um, and I'm so ready for this to be over, girl. We still got like three more months or three, four months or whatever of this shit to go through. And it's irritating my spirit because I'm so tired of seeing a lot of all of the misinformation. Because I was one of the ones who thought, yeah, she probably did lock up a lot of people until I looked. You know what I'm saying? So I research myself, you know? And, and, oh, she don't have black culture. She's pandering to the black folks. Do you want to know what politics are? P in politics stands for pandering. So every politician that gets up in there and they trying to elect or whatever get elected, they're going to pander to every fucking body. All right. Somebody gonna say, talk about the fact that she came out there to um, Beyonce's freedom, trying to pander to black folks. Beyonce and her like this, and so it makes sense, bitch. The song fits, okay? Cause baby, we fighting for our freedoms. We fighting for our fucking rights, okay? You know, Project Twenty Five out here, uh, 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 um, and, and people don't want to read the whole thing and, and see exactly what and all the all the areas of all the things that it's gonna affect. Okay, and it, it's just ri ridiculous. I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm not trying to tell you to vote for this person or that person. I'm just saying I'm voting for Kamala. Okay, that's just what it is. I don't want Trump up in the office. If you want to vote for him, fine. I would suggest you keep that to yourself on my stuff because as soon as I see it, you will be blocked. Call it petty or whatever, but no, let me stop playing. If you're on YouTube, you know, you can have your stuff. It, it, you want to know what I've been blocking? I've been blocking the ones who are very rude and ignorant about the way that they're going about saying that they are going to vote for Trump. And I'm talking about the black folks that follow me or, you know, because nine and tens, I'm not following you and I don't even know that that's what it is. But then when you come into my comments and you're trying to be so rude and so defensive about this whole situation, yeah, that'll make me block. Other than that, you can, you can, you can voice and say, this is the reason why and all this stuff. And if you put out an intelligent, you know, respectful conversation, I don't have a problem with that. Because again, if you're going to vote for who... Nobody has to vote, be on the same page. That's why we have two parties, okay? You have the choice to do whatever it is that you want. But I just feel as though you cannot get mad at another person who wants to vote a different way or wants to do something differently than what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? And it's their right. We get upset at Trump supporters because of the way that they go about things. It's just very cultish and it's very too much, okay? That's why I get mad at them. But for the ones that I may not agree with the reason why they, with them voting for this man, but that's their right. And if you're doing it in a way that you're not trying to like throw it down our throats or whatever and vice versa with the, with the Democrats or whatever, it's cool. It's cool. I, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I can respect that. And I don't have a problem with that. But the ones that get blocked is the ones that do too freaking much. All right. Let me tell you something. I, 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 the way stuff going right about now, girl, I know we doing Democrat and Republican, but then I know, already know that I said, you know, them third parties don't matter. Bitch, your girl might just switch over to independent. I have no idea. It is crazy. And I'm not talking about this time. Maybe next time. I don't know. I don't know. Because. Even if y'all was trying to get Kamala not to be the nomination, somebody gonna say something. Oh, you know, we didn't have a choice to pick or whatever. Girl, what? Who we gonna pick then? We don't know nobody else. We have three months to get something to vet somebody to actually get the del the, the the girl. What? 
We don't know nobody else that well. We know Kamala at least. At least we know her goddamn name and we know her history. And let me just talk about this. The people want to say, oh, Kamala, she ain't been around for four years. She ain't do this and she ain't do that. Do y'all know what the fucking job of the vice president is? The way that y'all be on that lady ass about how come she's not here? How come she's not doing this? How come she's not doing that? Because it ain't her job. It ain't her job to be out there in the forefront. That's the president's job, okay? She is the vice president. She is second in command, not first in command. Y'all didn't do all of this when y'all went and went. And I ain't hear nobody, maybe because y'all didn't care about Trump. But nobody said shit about this when um, Trump was in the office and talking about uh, Pence. Okay? Nobody was saying, oh, what Pence is going to do? Why he ain't out here saying this and doing this? But when it comes to Kamala, a black woman, you know, all of a sudden, like, it's, it's why you ain't out here? Why you ain't doing this? And why you ain't doing this? Why y'all putting so much pressure on her shoulders and you don't do it for everybody else? And don't say that you did because you didn't. Don't say that you did because you didn't. Okay? Like, let's stop it. Let's be fucking fair and let's be reasonable and let's what? Do our research. Okay? But anyway, moving on from that, girl, y'all vote the way that y'all want to vote. I ain't finna get on here and tell y'all what y'all need to do. I just need y'all to register and I just need y'all to vote. And y'all vote for whoever y'all want to. Okay? And honestly, I just feel like we really should just keep it to ourselves. But in this climate, girl, it's just a mess. A mess. Moving on from that, another mess that happened. And unfortunate. For those that are talking about one of the reasons why I won't vote for Trump is because of the way that he will change a lot of things around. In one of these situations that just popped up, I think it was July 7th, Sonya Massey, she was at a home near Springfield, Illinois, in my state, okay? She called the police, excuse me, she called the police because she felt like it was a prowler out there. Somebody was stalking or looking in or walking around her um, her place. She called the police for help, for assistance, right? They come to her door, excuse me. And, you know, she said, please don't hurt me, okay? Um, she's 36 years old. And I do believe that she was dealing with a little bit of mental health illnesses. And this is why, again, where we keep talking about how the police department need all these police people. They need to have something in place to help them to deal with people who have mental illnesses, okay? And to decipher the right course of actions, you know? Instead of just instantly jumping to, oh, let's take them out, let's do this, let's shoot them and all that stuff, because that's literally what just happened. And this make it worse because the way that the story was spent by the officer and you put that out there trying to make it seem like this woman tried to attack him and she did not. And I hate the fact that people are still running with that narrative even when the video, the body cam came out. She called because she was concerned that somebody was looking into her home. They came there, and you had this one particular officer, um, Grayson, who, who, who actually, in the past couple of years, through what is it, six years almost, he's been in six departments. He's only thirty years old, and he's been in six departments. He haven't even been there in each department for like a whole year. I looked at the record, you know, and I was just like, mm. they said terminated for this, and then resign, resign, resign. Why did you resign? Misconduct. And that's exactly what we've been seeing that's been happening lately, where you have these police officers that have been involved in, you know, situations where somebody got hurt unjustly. They get a little bit of punishment, get an unpaid leave or they get fired. They don't go to jail, but they get hired by another police force. We see that. We see that, unfortunately. And that's exactly what's been going on with him, right? And I'm not finna go through everything. She was not hostile. She had a boiler pot of water on the stove when the police officer said, yeah, go turn it off because we don't want no fire or something like that. In the midst of that, she was saying, you know, um, I think she said, I love y'all. Um, she was trying to get her ID. 
and then you know when she was trying to move that pot of water whatever all of a sudden stuff just started escalating and Grayson this officer Grayson who was in jail right about now waiting because they don't, didn't give him bail um which I'm surprised that they did I'm surprised that they still have him locked up and don't have him out on bail or don't have him on administrative leave and he can do whatever it is that he want or whatever until the investigation is done. But, um, yeah, he's been locked up since this happened or, or probably a little bit after this happened. Um, the thing of it is, he made it seem as if that woman was going to throw some water. They, she made, he made it seem as if Sonya was going to throw some water on him. He said, I'm not going to take no boiling water to the face. Fuck that. This is after everything happened. And I'm just like, okay. I can understand feeling like, oh, that might happen and how that, and you can jump back. You see what it might do and you could jump back. You could have tased her, whatever. But at the end of the day, she was literally moving the pot off the stove because they told her to. She had her oven mitts in her hands trying to move the hot pot off the stove. And you're pulling your weapon out on her, talking about some, if you do, I will shoot you in the face. Because she said, I rebuke you. And then they was like, what? He said, I rebuke you. That's what she said. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And because of that, you felt threatened enough to pull your gun out and to shoot her headshot and then when that first you know come out that first video come out people like well she looked like she was about to throw the pot of water on her on him or whatever girl when they uh, another angle of her actually with the pot she literally was moving the pot he said put that down or whatever and, 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 and whatever he said she moved away from the pot had the other mess in her hand and she had it like this and then she went down on the floor like please don't shoot me she wasn't about to throw nothing at him or none of them. She wasn't a threat at that moment. And she never was. And you shoot her in the face. And then you didn't even want to give her medical attention. Where well, there's a possibility that she could have been saved. Probably a little small percentage. But we wouldn't know because you said no, don't get no medical attention. Okay, and then you said you're not going to waste your medical supplies on her. Called her a fucking crazy bitch. I'm just like, you couldn't shoot her in the shoulder, you couldn't shoot her in the arm, or whatever. You couldn't say, hey, put that down. You couldn't pull out a taser. But no, you instantly shoot her in the head. All because she had a pot of boiling water that she was moving off the stove because she was told to. She had a mess in her hand. She crouched down trying to defend herself. Like, please don't. And you literally went over, you didn't even go over, but you popped her just like that. You tried to make it seem like she was a threat and she wasn't. Tried to make it seem like she was finna come for you, but she wasn't. You get one fucking story and the video cam, body cam shows a totally different. The complete opposite. And shit like that pisses me off. Because y'all up here, one in us, to see the good in people like Trump. And say that he's not this and he's not that. And he's going to protect us and he's going to do this. When this man has literally on the record said that if he gets reelected, he's going to give these police officers immunity. And then you have something like this happen. So if this was under Trump. He would have gave this man immunity and we wouldn't even be talking about this. That man would be free. What we would be talking about is trying to lock him up and nothing we can do about it because Trump gave him immunity. Because Trump made it okay. This is what we have to deal with. And at the end of the day, again, I know what I said earlier, but I also want to put this out here. You black and you voted for Trump. That's fine. But I just want you to understand, you're still not equal. You're gonna still be subjugated to everything that we are subjugated to and been subjugated to. Okay? It doesn't it doesn't exempt you. You trying to kiss up to this man, you trying to suck his ass. 
and you're still being looked at as a nigger with a hard ER. You're not equal. You never will be in their eyes, in his eyes. I just want y'all to understand. Like, I'm so fucking tired of shit like this. I, and then for this to happen, like, it reminded me of a situation that happened out here where this woman, I don't know if she got killed, but I know they broke into her home and it was the wrong fucking door. And she was naked. And she couldn't even put her clothes on. And she's trying to tell them this is the wrong door. And it happened out here in Chicago, I believe. And, and they put that, and that happened under the mayor's, under Lightfoot's, you know, when she was the mayor out here. And it just pissed me off, that whole thing, and to see how frightened we are. And you want to understand, you want us to trust y'all. And we do get that the police inherently, it's a lot of bad, and it's a lot of good. It's some bad, it's some, it's some good, okay? But we hear more stories about the bad that has been affecting black folks and people of color, minorities, for decades, for centuries. That's why we just have a hard time trusting the police. Yeah, we do need to call them for help. But at this point in time, it's like, we call you for help. And we gonna make it alive. We shouldn't have to think about that. This is so disheartening. This is so messed up. And then the story that you told the family is totally different from what actually happened in the body cam. You lied to her fucking family. He needs to go under the jail. He needs to be in gym pop. And they need to turn him all which way loose, but loose, okay? Beat his ass, do all of that. He has been indicted by a grand jury on three counts of first degree murder and one count each of aggravated bat battery of firearm with firearm and um, official misconduct. And had the nerve to say not guilty. You put in a not guilty plea when you the, the video evidence telling you that you're guilty. Mind you, if you look at the other cops that was there, they was confused as shit why he went there. He was, they was looking like, what the fuck? And I'm just like, oh, oh. I'm just, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of it. Girl, it's an event going on up here. They've been up here all week, and mm, they be loud and all this stuff. And then, girl, listen, we get off of that, and then you get into the situation that happened down in Tennessee with the 12-year-old who smothered her 8-year-old cousin all over her iPhone. And then not only did she smother the girl, she repositioned her body in the bed as if like nothing was going on. Cleaned up her mess and all that. They're charging her. Um, What did they charge her with? She's charging juvenile court with first degree murder and tampering with evidence. And at this point, go ahead and lock her up. Lock her up. And, and, and I, don't, I feel like something needs to be done to the parents too because what is going on? But then again, you just never know. Some kids, are out here and they're a little psychopath and I, I hate to put it out there but we already know that that happens okay and I feel like mentally something ain't right with that girl probably something else was going on in the household everybody needs to be looked at because why would a 12 year old get whatever what is what's what they upset what they arguing over the iPhone or whatever think that the right course of action is to suffocate her family member and then reposition her body and go off like everything is okay that is scary that is beyond scary okay <clears throat> and usually i'm like you know these kids need a chance these kids need a chance but yeah she needs i hope they get in her therapy a psychotherapist or whatever because something about this is not right and it's just like the cold calculatedness of it you're 12 years old and you out here doing this Rest in peace to um, little, um, what's her name, Dem Demiria, Demiria. But that's, that's, oh, that is over a fucking iPhone. Y'all, these kids are, an iPhone bitch, and y'all 12 and 8 years old with an iPhone. Y'all kids got iPhones. Y'all kids got phones in general. Girl, I grew up in a time where the phones came out in 2000, well, while I was in high school, in the high, beginning of high school or whatever. 
We ain't getting no phone, okay? Hell no. Nah. My mom said if y'all not paying the bill, you are not getting on no phone plan. When we did get a phone, you want to know what my first phone was? It was a track phone that you brought from Walmart. And then you brought the phone from Walmart probably was like $20, $40. And then you buy some money that you put on prepaid minutes, okay? You got to buy the card and you load it up. And if you use those minutes and you go over, you ain't going to have nothing. To, you, you can't use it. That's just what it was. Okay, we was on that cheap shit. Then we tried to get on singular wireless. Mm -mm, that didn't work for a minute. Then we went to T-Mobile. And then I switched over to AT&T. But you want to know what was going on when I did all that? I was paying for it. Girl, these kids got good these days because my mama wasn't paying for shit. <laughs> you got to pay for it yourself, okay? But, um, yeah, I ooh, that just that just made me mad. That, that that hurt my heart. These two stories have really hurt my heart so bad because black people and black women, black kids, and we see how they are literally falling short and falling victim to the system and falling victim to whatever the environment that's going on around them. Because, again, why does that 12-year-old know how to suffocate and then to reposition the body? That is what's getting me. That's sad. That's sad. Um, moving on, I guess we can get into some entertainment stuff. <laughs> Y'all, Miss Netta, I know we talked about Miss Netta probably a couple weeks ago um, when we were talking about the BET Awards. But Miss Netta, let me tell you something. I want y'all to understand. I'm not going to take offense if y'all call her he because Miss Netta, you know, they try to um, get, yeah, you know, women can be, straight people can be have transphobic things slurred at them too, right? But at the same time, if a person is saying that they are not a woman or not considering themselves a woman or don't think of themselves as a woman and they know that they are a man and this is just a character, I don't get offended when people call Ms. Netta he and call her Joe because that's literally what he go by, you know? That's really what they go by. But I'm calling Ms. Netta because it's what I'm used to saying and it comes out so easily. So that's just what it is. But let me just tell you this. I had to bring that up because she was on the fucking internet on, on, on TikTok going off. All right. This is a whole case of prime example. We have to be careful about the people that we make popular. Okay. And I say we because we all engage. Whether we support, whether we're talking bad about them or calling them out on something, that's still putting them out there. Me talking about this situation right now is still putting them out there. You know what I'm saying? So again, even though I'm saying I'm talking about myself as well, we have to be careful about who we make popular. Because it started off cute. Charles, your lunch is ready, and then all of a sudden, bitch, get a big head, and now you on live talking about some. I don't want to be no black woman or whatever. I don't want to be no woman. I damn sure ain't trying to be no black woman. If anything, I'd be a white woman because y'all asses is ignorant. Y'all ain't dumb. Y'all ain't smart. Well, no, y'all dumb. Y'all ain't smart, and all this stuff or whatever. And I'm like, whoa, fucking whoa. It kills me the way people get mad at their supporters and they say stupid shit like that when. The majority, the majority of your support comes from black women. I don't see or hear white women talking about a Miss Netta. Okay? And even some of the black women, they don't even know who the fuck you are. That's how black people probably don't even know who the fuck you are outside of TikTok. And you, you hear that damn big. But you talk about something, you're disrespectful to fucking black women. And yet you are making yourself a characterization of a black woman, but yet you don't want to be one and you're, you don't give a fuck about them. And then when the people try to call you out about it and try to make you hold yourself accountable for it, you don't really want to do that. And at the end of the day, I don't want her to try to backtrack or anything like that. I want people to start standing on their shit. Okay. It bothers me when you have somebody that is so fucking popular in whatever realm that it is and they say some disparaging shit just like this and those same black women still, some of them same black women still support them. Hell no. You had people on here defending that lady or defending that person and then you do this. That's how you isolate your, 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 your core group. But of course, like I said, you're still going to have something that's going to, they don't give a fuck. As long as you're entertaining them, you can say anything you want. You can dog them out. You can say your mama ain't shit. Okay, that's just, that's just what it is. And it's unfortunate, you know. 
I'm not saying cancel, you know, I ain't never gonna say cancel this person, cancel that person, but I'm not supporting and I never really was. I used to saw, saw, the only reason why I know about her is because I do be on TikTok. I know about the situation because it's always on my For You page just because somebody else is talking about it. You know, talking about the dumb shit that they done. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, uh, again, we just gotta be careful who the people that we make, who we elevate, okay? People have to be careful once you get into a position, you can't be getting letting that ego get to you. Like that's all that it is, your ego and everything. Making yourself believe that you bigger than what you are, bitch. You ain't shit. You ain't shit. Like, girl. <sighs> anyway. I'm moving on from that. Soldier Boy is someone's Tasha Gay and William the Baddest. Now let me tell you something. I didn't watch that William the Baddest interview. Actually, I haven't watched the Tasha K video in a long time. Interview in a long, 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 long time. Okay. I don't support Tasha K because she represents something and she does stuff that I don't like. You know, I'm not gonna trash her, but at the end of the time, and then day, I just don't support that type of stuff that she does. Okay. You know, she made a whole lane out of it. Good for her. But it's just not something that aligns with my spirit and my energy. And she did an interview with William the Baddest where he got up there. Him is another person who is very clout thirsty. He's very attention seeking. And he is on this thing, this thing. He tries to get on any type of reality show, any type of MTV show. Because that's where I really saw him too. Like he, and this is why I stopped really watching MTV. I don't watch MTV unless it's like the awards and 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 I don't even watch that. I haven't watched MTV in a long time. And I've been noticing some of the shows that they put on. I can tell now how fake they are. The Tammy Roman show was fake because that that what called you know the one about catching you cheating and all that stuff. That's fake as shit. We already know that because you have internet personalities that's on there who are clearly still together you know that i even know you know what i'm saying and it's just like when i can spot and tell that you are not even trying to disguise and hide that uh, uh your show is fake i'm not gonna be supporting it okay um because you're trying to make your audience seem like we're stupid and we're supposed to just go along with it that i'm in a secret relationship or whatever that's fake as shit too okay and then when I seen William the Baddest on a couple of these MTV shows, Catfish and other shows after that, um, yeah, that's how I knew for sure, for sure, this shit is fake because he would do anything just to get on TV, just to get his name out there, and nobody still cares about him in that way. So let's make up fucked up shit. You get on the interview and you lying about you being in a relationship or having something going on with Soldier Boy. Of all the people, why would he want to choose you? Why would he want to choose you? If that was the way that he wanted to go, why would he want to choose you? Come the fuck on, okay? Somebody, and it ain't even about looks, somebody that is known for yapping. Okay? He's like a white Sydney star, minus the transgender. You know? And it just pisses me off. And so, he basically said, I'm gonna, he, he got up there and basically said he had something going on with Soldier Boy. And, you know, Tasha K put it out there. So, I guess because it was on Tasha K's platform and she allowed him to get up there, that's why he's suing her. And because he said it, that's why he's suing him. Because it's all lies. And, I mean, I would be so tired of being sued if I was t that's why I don't want to be no celebrity because do you know just about all these celebrities be getting sued left and right and we don't even fucking know it. We don't even know it. And it'd be like, girl, what are we getting sued for today? Okay, lawsuit out the ass and half the time it don't even be nothing worth it. Okay. They people just be doing shit, just be doing stuff. But yeah, I'm I'm on Soldier Boy's side this time because that was wrong. And anybody that looked at that interview, you can and thought that he was telling the truth, bitch, something's wrong with you. Moving on from that, I'm going to need the people to stop asking Lotto about whether or not she'll do a back and forth situation like Kendrick and Drake with somebody or whatever the fuck. We don't want it. We don't need it. And I need y'all to fucking stop forcing it. Okay. Lotto and Spice, bitch, let the fuck go. Ice Spice. It's, it's, it's the most boringest stupidest shit ever okay i don't even know the start of it and don't care to know i just feel like it ain't even necessary moving on from that 
JT to, um, released her new, what is it? Is it an album or a mix mixtape? I listened to it one time. That's all I was going to give it, okay? And I'm the type of person, because I ain't got no problem with nobody, okay? I'm going to listen to the girls, get them a spin, get them a stream or two, you know, especially if it's actually good, because you never know. You can uh, find somebody and be like, mm, I don't think I want to listen to them or whatever, and then you find out, you go ahead and listen to it and be like, oh, shit, okay, I like this. Well, you know, I've come to the realization that we only like the city girls because they were fun and they do that's it and it's Carisha, you know um they can't rap for a damn i'm gonna just put that out there and it ain't a regional thing because there's people from down south there's people from florida and all that in miami who know how to rap their ass off they can't rap for a damn okay jt is the better rapper when it comes to Carisha and jt but other than that absolutely not and it's so crazy that you have people that are, you know, maybe y'all do, the ones that are saying that, you know, that the album or whatever it is, the mixtape was good. That's cool. And I, I felt like it had potential. It just didn't reach it. It's not my cup of tea, but I'm not going to dog a person out. Like, so I've seen some people just giving, like, very, very harsh criticism. And I get it. She aligned herself with people that you probably don't like. Oh, the fuck well. I, I I mean I love Megan. I like um um Cardi and all, whatever. So the fuck what? And I can still be like JT and M. Okay, I ain't got no problem with none of these people because these people don't fucking know me and I don't know them like that. And if it sounds good to me, I'm gonna support it. Okay, that's just what it is. I'm not trying to get involved in all that bullshit. But at the end of the day, if you're gonna be doing all this stuff, put out some shit that sound good to me. And it just didn't. It it wasn't bad. It had potential. I only really like one song, that Uncle Al song, and that's because it samples Salt and Pepper and um, 702 Subway when it's all I am Cause I like they song. I like um, oh my God, is it Good Love? No, that's um, what's the song that they did with Usher? That's that. Oh, that shit was my shit, bitch. I love that. I played that out. I like Twerk Later, all of that stuff. But, you know, JT single, it just really hasn't been hitting me. It's been hitting the younger people or whatever, but it ain't been hitting me. It ain't my cup of tea. But I do feel like the rapping thing really ain't her forte. It's just something that to play with or whatever. I feel like she has a more chance of being like a little fashion girl um, because she has been given the looks. I'm not even going to lie. You know, and I know some people try to hate on her or whatever when she tried different things or whatever, but... She's branching out. She's doing something. And I really feel like she got a lane with the fashion thing. I may be, you know, a little naive when it comes to that. But I just feel like that. Compared to her and Carisha, like, I feel like, yeah. Okay. But um, y'all tell me how y'all felt about it. Like, I don't even remember, honestly. But that one song, because I played it out. That was my shit, Uncle App. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, moving on from there. Um, Scrappy and Chaotic. So I guess the new season of Love and Hip Hop is back. And Scrappy and Chaotic are going at it. Off screen. <sighs> Video came out of them. Scrappy charged at Chaotic. Chaotic trying to say, oh, it's probably because of drinks. And it was a long day of filming and all that stuff. And next thing you know, Scrappy going off in a couple of videos. Do I not actually watch all of them? Absolutely not, because I really don't care. Babe, listen basically was saying that you know chaotic is fake chaotic is a thief chaotic is sassy or whatever <sighs> i just feel like this is bullshit and i feel like the problem is scrappy that's all i gotta say on it moving on from that we found out that spongebob is autistic the creator of spongebob he said because i think he a little autistic too Girl, they said, he came out and he said, yeah, Spongebob is autistic. I mean, I kind of see it. And then the lady that did Hello Kitty, what is it? Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty. She said it ain't no cat. It's a girl or something like that. Bitch, it's a cat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I said, now see, the Spongebob one, I could get. 
I can I can kind of understand, okay? Hello Kitty, that is a fucking cat. Why is a girl or a human got whiskers on them? Explain that, bitch. Okay, like, come on, not nah, don't don't gas like me. Do not gas like me. All right. Anyway, I just want to throw that out there just to say some shit. But um, y'all think SpongeBob could be artistic, or y'all think that he just stupid? Which one? Which one? You know, it kind of makes sense though. I ain't never watched SpongeBob. That was my little sister type of thing. And my little sister, she just as dumb. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. Only reason why, because because that's y'all niece, that's y'all niece. But bitch, if you would have heard what my other sister had told me, what this little girl had did the other day, I'm not gonna put her business out there. But y'all probably would have said the same thing, like, "Girl, what? Pipe the fuck down, okay?" That. Let me scratch that from the record. I ain't gonna say she done. She is just sheltered. That's what it is. And I blame her mama. Cause she the youngest she the youngest but hey it is what it is moving on from that um anna ferris okay she played cindy on scary movie one and two three and four three and was she on four i think she was on four too either way she was on there right and um she said that i think they're looking to do another installment of scary movie i don't understand why but they are um, and she said the only reason why she would come back is if the money is right and if Regina Hall was back as Brenda. And I said, make sure the money is right for Brenda, um, for Regina Hall as well. But at the end of the day, I don't need it. If the Wayne brothers, if Sean, Marlon, and Kenan ain't on board with it and they ain't running it again like they did one and two, bitch, I don't want to see it because you can tell when they dropped off and when they took it from them because. Three was okay. Four and five, trash. Trash. Okay. Um, we don't need it. If they if if, if the original people from the first ones is not um involved, I don't wanna see it. I don't need it to be made. Bitch, I always thought if um Sean's character was still on there, I thought probably by the fifth one he probably would have already came out. Cause y'all know he's gay. He DL, but he's outwardly DL. He's the girl. Okay, but um, I think he would have came back if they do a new one. He probably gonna come back as a gay man with a husband. Okay, I'm just saying because the way he was, oof, y'all already knew, y'all already knew. And then she probably Brenda probably would still be fucking him, but you know it'd be like that sometimes. Um, and speaking about the LGBT community, did y'all hear? And, and, and how y'all feel about Miss Kim Burrell getting up there at the Stella Awards to, you know, uh, accept her uh. Aretha Franklin Icon Award and she got up there and said, you know, I want to apologize to the LGBT community for my remarks, you know, because we all got peoples, you know what I'm saying? What she say? She said, I want to apologize to the LGBT community. Let's give them a great big round of applause. Now, why would she say that? Because them people, did you hear the audience? They was like this. Hmm. Bitch, they didn't want to do that. Okay. Um... She said, let's give them a round of applause. We want them to have strength and to sincerely know that we must all do the work to embrace. And I hope that this war and this moment can be the beginning of a bridge building and listening to each other as we follow peace with all men and develop the character of God, which requires seeing God as all of people and his love to everyone. Let me just tell you this. I know it's people that's like, well, she didn't really say nothing wrong because, you know, this was in the Bible and all that. Girl, shut the fuck up, okay? That was old shit. Which testament, which part did you listen to? The old or the new? New Testament or the Old Testament? Girl, um, it's a lot of shit out here that we do that is considered a sin. And y'all be doing it properly. But oh, let two bitches fuck. Let two niggas fuck. It ain't bothering nobody. Oh, it's the end of the earth and you're really going to hell. Girl, you're going to hell for eating shellfish. <laughs> you're going to hell for fornicating before marriage, okay? If that's the case, you know, like, come on. I thought somebody said one sin ain't greater than the other. Like, come on. That's debatable. Because if you out here are hurting people and killing people, that's a big ass sin to me. But y'all put fucking 
LGBT people being gay bigger than people murdering and, and, and armoring people. Like, come the fuck on, all right? But, Kimberly, I'm not buying the shit, but thank you for putting that out there. I feel like you just did that for some political reasons that's going on behind the scenes in that whatever i don't know the reason but i don't believe it but i'm gonna hold you to it for a second i'm not gonna come on your ass or whatever and, and, and get so hyped and all that stuff i mean thank you because you didn't really have to do that because you remember when she said i never said lgbt last night what i said was s-i-n bitch that shit was funny i didn't gonna lie that shit was funny to me let me tell you something i hate it when People can be racist, and um, I hate it when people say some racist stuff that makes me chuckle, or say some homophobic stuff that makes me chuckle, because I want to be offended 100%. <laughs> I want to laugh at that shit in my head, and I want to be like, now you know damn well, I don't want to do that. I want to be like, bitch, why the fuck would you say some shit like that? That's what I want to be, okay? I don't want to be <laughs> like that, but that bitch, she made me laugh right there. I didn't say LGBT. What I said was S-I-N. You know what, bitch? All right. Um, Chris Brown getting sued for $50 million because he and his crew whooped some people asses outside of a concert. Listen, at the end of the day, he has a history. Okay? He has a history. And they said they left uh, a couple of them or one of them still up in the hospital and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. Every time I see something about Chris Brown, I don't see nothing about his tour being going good or whatever. Girl, y'all put it out there that he, um, and the tour is nice. The tour is doing a good job and everything because I be seeing the, the pictures and uh, the shit on TikTok. Let me tell you something. I, I ain't never going to fault Chris for the way that he, you know, respects his fans in a certain degree. Like, when he do the meet and greets, I love that. Okay? Like, I can feel how I feel about Chris and his behavior, but... The thing that he doing for the meet and greets or whatever with his fans and taking the pictures and the way that they want them and all that stuff, that's real nice. I really like that. That's why them motherfuckers still stay with him, okay? Y'all want to know why they still support? Because of that. Because of that. And half of them want to fuck them. Because of that. That's just what it is, you know? I guess. But at the end of the day, we know he got a problem with them hands, okay? And we can see him whooping people asses. We can see him whooping people asses. So, you know... Um, I would like some more positive news to be put out there about Mr. Christopher Brown, okay? Um, and not every time he being sued for this or on money for this and $20 million here, $50 million here. Bitch, what? I'm going to just say this. Them people deserve some money, but you ain't going to get no $50 million. You probably won't even get a million, okay? But hell, you know, pay them people and pay their hospital bill. Um, Takashi 69 baby, we ain't heard nothing about this motherfucker in a long time. Last time we heard is that the IRS was seizing his shit. Girl, they done seized all his stuff. They done seized a Bentley, a Lamborghini. Um, the Bentley is $85,000. It was from 2017. And the Lamborghini was from 2019. And it was $1,175,043. And basically, they said that they're going to put that to the IRS debt. You know... You can't be out here playing with the IRS. And I just feel like that motherfucker broke in general because who was out here talking about a 6 9 We haven't heard that name in a long time. In a long goddamn time. And um, Sean Kingston and his mama, baby, they about to lock their asses up. They about to lock their asses up. You know, they facing 20 years. They facing 20 years out here frauding and doing all these scammers and shit. It is what it is. Mind you, his mama had been in jail for shit like this already. Girl... A family that steals together stay together, I guess. <laughs> a family that scams together, we're going to cram together, bitch. And that sale, all right? You're going to be on cell block N, I'm going to be on cell block D, bitch. What the fuck? That, you know, the <sighs> parenting is just not good these days sometimes. I don't know. But who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? But anyway, oh, the last thing that I want to talk about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I told you, I, I was going to give y'all at least an hour. I don't want to shortchange y'all like that. Y'all see House of the Dragon? I am so fucking mad. First of all, just about all the shows going to go on high 80s for the next three weeks because the Olympics is coming. I don't give a fuck. Listen, I'm not going to watch them shits, okay? I may if I wind up, because I don't even turn on a regular TV unless I got to look at something that I got to um, talk about. I've noticed that. Like, I just turn on streaming shit, you know? Um, 
but I might look at some stuff. You know, I do like it when they this well, it ain't winter. This is the Summer Olympics, but I do like looking at the winter ones. I like looking at the skis and all that stuff. You wanna know which ones I actually like looking at? Also, I like looking at the X Games. When they be doing the bike tricks and the skateboarding tricks, all that shit, bitch, I be all up into that. Okay, but anyway, um, you know I might look at the little gymnastics for Simone Bone, uh, Simone Bone, Simone Bounds and all that. You know, for her uh return. You know, um, but yeah, what was I about to say? House of the Dragon. We only got two more episodes left, and I'm kind of upset at that. So you mean to tell me we get ten episodes in the first season, and then y'all wait like fifteen years to give us eight episodes in the second season? Why are we two seasons? Why are we two episodes down? And do not blame the pandemic and COVID. -19. Okay, do not blame it. All right, y'all could y'all can y'all can churn out a couple more. And let me tell you something. They was trying to get a new dragon, uh, uh, trying to get somebody to ride the dragon. They think that the only people that can ride the dragons is the ones that got Targaryen blood. They tried to get that man, and he got bitch. Did you see what Sea Smoke did to him? That dragon came through and was like, he was like, okay, cool, bitch. The dragon Sea Smoke came over there and calmed her ass down. And bent herself down, waiting for him to get on there. And I guess she got impatient as hell, like, bitch, bring your ass. And she just said, fuck this. <sighs> and torched his ass. I said, God damn. But then, but then, Corliss, he got two illegitimate sons, right? Niggas. Sea Smoke found the one. They got the locks. They keep on saying, when daddy gonna say us and all this stuff, whatever. Why you doing this? Because he really wants the daddy to go to the claim them. Bitch, and he and he over the daddy because of that, okay? Because they his bastards. But at this point, Sea Smoke found him, and Sea Smoke want him to be the rider. I see, Sea Sea Smoke know what's up. So niggas got it. And then you got Renea. Let me tell you something, Queen Riri. Who didn't know Queen Riri was up there looking like that? <laughs> <laughs> I said we got lesbian action. I knew it was gonna happen because ain't doesn't the lady or the person that plays her do they go back they them? I know they 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 die. I mean, mm, I know they same gender type of shit. But anyway, you know she gives me that tease. I'm pretty sure I'm I'm on the ball. Um, but yeah, I was like, go ahead because Damon out here. I said, damn bitch, you out here fucking your uncle, having kids with him, and now you fucking a bitch or about to. Y'all just said free for fucking all, okay? You know what? <clears throat> At least we didn't see no incest this episode. I was fine with that. You know, we saw look at shit. Um, Edmund, that little one-eyed bastard, he about to he about to fuck up the city. You tried to kill your brother, which honestly I don't care. But um, uh, it's the fact that they taking all other people's animals and stuff to feed the dragons or whatever but they ain't getting the people nothing and so the peoples is hungry they is tired of eating fish and water for soup okay and now they finna turn baby when they was about to get allison and her um um her son's daughter or whatever is that her daughter a cousin girl what the fuck ever um they ran her ass out the goddamn city Bitch, they was throwing food at her. I said, now, hold on. Y'all was saying that y'all was hungry as hell. But y'all wasting food by throwing it at this bitch. And then her son stripped her and said, listen, your services are no longer needed on this fucking council. You can go back to being the woman and doing womanly duties, bitch. I said, God damn. You are an evil little bastard. But then again, it's Allison. I don't give a fuck about her. It's what she deserves. But I just wanted to put that out there. Y'all, I am loving House of the Dragon. I really am. I really am. But uh, anyway, you guys tell me how y'all feel about this video. I know it wasn't the same upbeatness that we always have. But, you know, you have to get some serious shit out the way, unfortunately. And we ain't really had nothing else to go on. But I really do hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of the week, if possible. And if not, you gotta make it, okay? Just know that you're here, you're breathing. And so that should be a plus right there, you know? And I appreciate y'all. And I will see y'all later. Peace.